103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, August 23rd, 11 a.m. And I'm Larry Rhodes, Doubter 5. And as we, as usual, we have our co-host on the line, Wombat. Hello, how are you? Hey, Ro- I got a phone for you. Roses are red, violets are blue. I don't care who I offend. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> a little poetic license there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Free verse. Yeah. And our <laughs> guests, our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs. Say hello. Wave. Oh. Uh, Red Leader. Boudreaux. And George. Hello, George. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. Mm. And conversely, we'll also talk about atheism. I'm, I'm sorry, religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville. And we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. And did you know that there's a streaming atheist call-in video show? Has been for over 10 years here in Knoxville. Did you know that one, but... I keep telling people that they need to get into this because you have the opportunity to play as like a tiny human in a village full of tiny little different animals and you can, uh, and you can gather bells and you can give them to your friends and you can like fish. It's amazing. It's really cool. Yeah, so check out what's, what's the name what of the thing I'm not, thinking about? Not it's a really great show. game. I, it's a really great I game. I don't know. One of these days you'll find it, but we'll tell you everybody how to find it after the mid-show break and then you can actually become involved in that show or this radio show um, by contacting our groups uh wombat what do you have for us today as far as topics we're going to be talking about death today (laughs) oh we're keeping it light keeping it light (laughs) on death but before we begin i throw it up to our own dread pirate higgs for our daily or weekly invocation all right holy ghost Father and son, Christians insist there's not three, but just one. And the one is still tripled if your soul is not crippled. But I think they're just having us on. That's good. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ram, Ram, Okay. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. I like that. Speaking of poetry. Ram, man. Ram, man. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So how's everyone doing? Dread Pirate, like I said, I love that shirt. Love the color combination that's going on this morning. How are you feeling? <laughs> What's, yes, what's uh, doing great, doing great. Enjoying the, the last vestiges of summer. Um, it is. It's, I feel the cold coming on. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I like it now that the weather's going to uh, moderate a bit. I can get back mm. on my bike. I, I don't like riding in 90-degree weather, but uh, I really look forward to the fall for, for motorcycle riding. Oh, I thought you meant, like, pedal bike riding. I was about nope. to say, I didn't know you were a biker, Larry. <laughs> I'm a biker, the other kind. <laughs> very cool, very cool, very cool. Eric, it's been a while since I've seen you. How you been? And I'm, I've been well. I've been missing it. Uh, the timing has not worked out lately, but uh, I'm glad to be back. Well, How's your music life gone? Like the, the full band, any new songs, new inspirations, n- nothing? What's going on? We have not been playing at all. I've been trying to do my own projects a little bit. Uh, I got everything set up to record. Nice. Uh, I, just need, I just need something to do. So <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll collaborate. Okay, right, that'd cool. be fun. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's figure something out. I'm, I'm working on stuff always. Uh, Dale, I see a big chocolate dime behind you. What's going on there? I don't think it's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's on mute. He doesn't know it, but he's holding up a chocolate uh, dime of looks like the bush. Anyway, uh, as he gets his, this is a sculpture. It's a sculpture. Hmm. Uh, How about now? We're f- we can hear you now. Can you hear What's me now? On? Yep. You must cut me off. Hmm. This is a sculpture I did of George Bush for a prominent Republican in this area who then gave it to Lamar Alexander. Okay. Very cool. Looks good. Looks nice. What's the material? Is it clay? Hmm. 
Looks, oh, looks almost good enough to well, eat. Well, uh, originally I made it out of a, a type of a polymer for him that had a bronze finish to it, but then I cast a few out of feces. Cool. Cool. Nice. All right. Keeping it real. George, <laughs> how you been? Oh, just fine. Still in love? What's the uh, the romance of George Brown? <laughs> the ongoing soap opera. Still in love with my occupational therapists. Yeah. Uh, we're wishing you luck. Yeah. We're batting for you over here, okay? Thank, well, I'm doing great. I mean, so, without God, I'm healing up just fine. <laughs> Not bad. The, so the I woman to... who drove me to the surgery is an atheist, and just before the anesthetist, anesthetologist, um, anesthesiologist, yeah, anesthesiologist, it's a big announced, announced his name. She said, "I'll pray for you." And she's an atheist. Nice. Her, prayer, <laughs> her prayers have manifested in my shoulder. Cool, cool. George, you wanted to start the topic on death for a while, and you've been really great and patient. Um, would you mind leading us on this conversation? Well, I have a, just a little story. This is my lightweight story, but it's this about is his little story. Okay. Yeah, it's about my son. When he turned uh, six years old, he, he went on a hot dog binge, and he would eat almost nothing else. Every day, every meal, it was hot dogs. Now, he had a... Infatu an infatuation with pigs since he was very little. And he loved stories about pigs. And I think, th I think there's a name for this when, when we give a, a human persona to an animal. Anthropomorphization. Um, yeah. Um, and one day it sort of dawned on him. He asked me the question, for me to eat pork, does the pig have to be killed? And I said, yes. And the, the emotions just flashed across his face. If you're kind. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, it's like he had to deal with the paradox of loving to eat his hot dogs mm. and knowing that pork went into them mm. and, that the, and that the pig had to be killed for him to enjoy his hot dogs mm. and that he loved pigs. Um, that's my story for today, my lightweight story. It sounds like I think death is more common and around the corner than we tend to let ourselves consider or be open to. Well, you know, I've been thinking uh, as as an organic atheist myself, being mm. raised with it, I had to come to terms with the concept of death as a finality pretty early in my life. You know, the mm. the realization of it, and but I did not have the indoctrination that people have of believing that in death would be a relief from the suffering of life into the hereafter forever mm. at the right hand of God or Jesus or whoever you want. And um, that's what got me interested in having this discussion is sure. where do we all come into death from? Yeah. How about we set it up with Larry first? Larry, how do you feel about death? And where is your position on it? Volume out. Like to carry on what he was saying about uh, death without suffering, I think that should be a basic human right, uh, the right to uh, be able to terminate your own life if your suffering becomes so great that you can't deal with it. There are some chronic uh, diseases that are very, very painful. Uh, in my particular uh, case, I had, a, I had an aunt uh, back in the day when you know, back in the 60s, I guess. Uh, she came down with uh, lung cancer and it took her seven years to die. Seven years of laying in a bed, wow. not being able to get out of the bed, yeah. uh, you know, dealing with bed sores, et cetera. Just, and, and there was no such thing as euthanasia at that point. And today it's still not legal in what, most of the countries, most of the advanced countries. And we need to have legislation that will allow us to take care of that or to do that. I want that option when I'm, if I ever get into that condition. Uh, the other thing I'd say about death is that uh, I think it's the end. I mean, there's no reason to believe that any part of me will transcend the end of the death of my mind, mm. of my brain. Mm. Uh, there's no reason to believe it. There's never been an example of a soul 
uh, in history, it's in 13 seasons of the ghost. Oh no, don't get Larry on souls. One. Don't get Larry on souls. Someone <laughs> yeah, jump in, change the topic. <laughs> yeah. But I'll just let it go there. I know we're, we have a time constraint, but I did want to get that out. Eric, I want to know how you feel because uh, I, I, I know we have talked about this before and like the finality of life and does death give it value? How do you feel? I think we have a new topic coming up from this conversation, the concept of dying versus death. And like, what, do you feel like one's worse and should we care more about one than the other? What's your opinion? Yeah, I'm, I'm with Larry on the uh, suffering bit. Uh, I, it, it seems like the best thing to do. And I think it's the utilitarian uh, point of view is to, to maximize happiness, right? And if, if, if you're dying and you're in pain, um, is that, I mean, it, I think in a, in a, is it, uh, would you say, a deontological point of view? Like, you know, death, you know, is, is a binary yes or no thing, and it's a bad thing. So we want to, uh, you know, prevent it at all costs, right? Mm, even, yeah. if, uh, even if you're suffering, and, and I, you know, the, Peter Singer famously was, you know, in fa favor of euthanasia. If, if someone was, you know, babies were born and only going to live for three months in horrible agony, but uh, if you look at it from a binary point of view, it's like, no, death, we can't, we can't kill anyone. You can't do it. It's bad. I'm just so, going to, before we head over to Dread, I want to see, like, is there a more sympathetic approach that you have? Because, like, it's easy to look at death from, you know, 10 miles away or maybe even, like, 60 years away, right? And say, like, it's a binary thing. But when it impacts you or, like, think people that you love, doesn't it become much more of an a empathetic, personal thing? And, like, how is your personal relationship with it? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I guess that that's what I was going to lead with with my conversation on on death. Is it's strange, and I felt I think it's helped me kind of stay with atheism at, at, at such a young age. I didn't have much death in my family uh, growing up. I've been to very few funerals, you know, and I, I definitely count myself lucky for that. But it, it's also coincidental, right? So you know, had I been you know, showered with, you know, deaths in the family and immediate family and really close relatives and friends. I think, you know, that can shake someone. Yeah. Um, so I, in, in some ways it, it, it kind of helped me. Now, I don't know how well prepared I will ever be for a, a really close death. It's probably going to hit me pretty hard, mm. but you know, at least, I don't know. So it's, it's hard for me to, 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 to empathize really closely with that because I, I just i haven't been around it a lot so i'm hope i'm hoping that my atheist perspective or at least just a willingness to say i don't know and not assume that there's an afterlife gives me better terms with death when it does happen personally in my family and i think there's worth in that dread i'm going to yeah. throw it over to you i saw you, i saw you had some things you wanted to say on Death. Well, I, I was I was actually swatting at a fly. Um, it's, I can still kind of see it up there. Head, yeah. It's just driving me nuts. Hey, Dred, you're on the floor. You're on the you're on the swab, as they would say in pirate talk. So um, you're sitting on the plank, or you're standing on the plank. My bad, bad you. <laughs> or are you watching someone jump off the plank? However it is. What's your opinion on death? How do you, how have you come to terms with it? Well, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, you know, amongst this uh, crowd here, I, I have a you know, a, a different perspective than that's uh, because I've spent many years as a firefighter and first right. responder. So, yep. um, you know, have uh, been very close to it. Uh, but when it's, you know, of course it's different when it's somebody else and not mm -hmm. someone in your bubble or your circle <laughs> or your family or whatever. So, um, but it does help frame those closer experiences and put it into perspective that, you know, this is just one aspect of existence and that, uh, you know, death is going to visit us all. And, and that's, and that's that essentially. But one thing I, I think about as well is that, um, I mean, life is, is not a, a, a quantitative, uh, thing. You know what I mean? Like, all things just have one life and and you know some people who don't want to for instance kill a pig to eat pork have no compunction about swatting a fly you know what i mean and those sure. things in terms of life are equal and so uh i think that's it has been for me anyway uh an important an important sort of reflection that uh 
life is life is life is life. And if it's a plant, if it's a fly, if it's a human being, um, you know, the, the value, um, is essentially the same. Are you saying that just after telling a story about how you're trying to swat a fly? Yeah. <laughs> these, athe these atheists are so hypocritical. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I, won't, I won't, I won't leave you on that. I'm going to give you one chance to save your face. On that dread. I've always thought like, Hey, um, I know it's unfortunate, but the fact is I care about the quality of my life and I'm stronger. Like, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm stronger than a fly. So if you get near my ice cream, you're dead. <laughs> That's all there is to it. I'm not saying it's right. Don't put me up on a plaque, but I'm going to do it because I'm stronger than you. And I'll give you the same credit if I was a fly in your ice cream. All right. Dale, uh, I'd love to hear what you think about death. Got the floor open. What's up? Man, why is he always freeze just before he's about to talk? What's going on there? What, what's going on? <laughs> like he's smooth the entire time. Yeah. I've witnessed it probably... Yeah, we are struggling to connect a uh, stable connection with Dale. Dale, how about this? Why don't you just reset your camera and audio and you can come it's back critical in? Critical care and emergency rooms and three different hospitals. And I'm probably seeing like. <laughs> uh, well, let's give him a second it may have to do with his bandwidth. You know, his video is okay until he starts talking. Then he needs I, more bandwidth. And it I, 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 I don't know it. how. Someone explained to me how internet works. I thought they all, like, it's just zeros and ones. Like, silence is zeros and ones, too, isn't it? Like, am I wrong? Well, it, it may depend on his, his uh, service provider as well. I mean, his phone uh, service provider, how wide they, how much bandwidth they give him, you know. Sure. And sure. Can, how far away the cell tower is. Yeah. Um, I'll throw in my, my two cents on death. Um, I've been thinking about it since, you know, I've had, I've had a loss in my family. Like, my, my father died when I was young. And there was always the condition of, uh, how do I do? Uh, I don't know if I want to go into it too much. I don't know if I, this is the show that I, I have the time to like really go into it, but I would say like death does happen. It sucks when it does happen, especially when it's to you. And it sucks when it's something that you're constantly thinking about because I, there is the impression that, you know, based on the color of your skin, someone's lives can be more meaningful or more valuable than others. And in a particular state like this, if you are listening to this and you, you feel like, you know, you have a lot to contribute with conversations, you feel like you want to understand people, but people don't want to understand you. Um, we are here as a, a voice of support. You enrich this world. You matter. And if you ever need help in like learning how to communicate with people, Dread has a great YouTube channel. I have a great YouTube channel where we go out and we try to talk to people and we try to go out and build understanding with other people. And uh, Eric also has a really great community in Knoxville that reached out to, I'm, I'm sorry, not Knoxville, Kentucky, that reached out to me and introduced me to a wealth of great people who are willing to sit down and talk with people about subjects and try to understand from them, not just preach, but understand in a group. And that's yep. worthwhile. And I recommend that if you don't have that kind of community, start one. <laughs> not yeah. to steal the words because it's know. worthwhile to have that and there's one thing uh i said you know if you if you die it sucks for you uh, mm -hmm. i have to differ if you're dead it doesn't bother you right. um i mean it's not good while you're dying but uh, there's a there's a meme going around the internet it says uh it doesn't bother you when you're dead you have no sensory uh, uh perception of it it yeah. just bothers the people that knew you and know you you yeah. know and yeah. same when you're dumb <laughs> it doesn't bother you but it bothers the people around you <laughs> oh with the memes with the memes, you know, the like memes. Me. dread pirate what do you got to say what's up so um one of our regular viewers men mm -hmm. um has asked this question she sure. says mind pirate would you do se on a religious on a religious terminally ill person when he says that his dream about paradise gives him peace about death what, is this a question to the group? Well, he, he asked that of me. Um, I certainly yeah. would. I would. If um, I have consent, if I have consent and that's what they want, yeah, that's an interesting yeah. point of view. I'm, I'm not – so my opinion is I'm not there to tell him he's wrong. I'm trying to understand why he's right. And if he's on the deathbed, he might tell me something that's worthwhile to me. I'm yeah, not, absolutely. Yeah. Like, SE is not an argument or debate where you have an opinion where you're trying to tell someone they're wrong. It's trying to understand from someone and you're working together to figure out if they just use a reliable way to get there.
That's it. Yeah. Eric, and, what's up? And it's interesting oh, uh, because uh, another of our viewers here has said, of course not. What fool would do that? <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> yeah, I would say to those people, hey, there's options where you can have meaningful conversations with people. Absolutely. If you have their consent. And I yeah. think if you've got consent and everyone's having a genuine, nice conversation about understanding, no topics off the table. Eric, what's up? Yeah, yeah so, and maybe to the, the point of the, the contrarian comment mm -hmm. here, uh, so maybe where the person's going with this question is, if if you you do have consent with the person, but if if you know that your skills are so good as a as a street epistemologist, and you know that you might actually give them doubt, they're on their deathbed, they're at peace, they're willing to, to they're happy to go to this paradise, and you take a little bit of that away from them in the last few moments of their life, is that maybe that's where they're going with the question? Like, would you would that be a good thing? I wouldn't. Yes. I wouldn't take it away from them. I would. It gives them comfort in their hour of need. But I mean, it, my, it's, it, it's, a lot of people say, "Would you talk? Would you tell your grandparents when they're like 80 years old? Would you try to talk them into atheism?" Uh, um, I, I, I personally don't think it's worthwhile to take away what comfort they've had pretty much all their life. But. Um, it depends. Are they out there trying to raise money for a church and for a religious organization? Are they voting for evangelicals to go into office? Uh, if they're just living their life and trying to enjoy the last few years they have, yeah. what's the purpose? Yeah. So here's here would be my thing. A conversation takes two people. And in my opinion, Socratic examination is a conversation. And if you are uncomfortable, potentially remove put, instilling doubt in someone that's trying to have a conversation with you, you don't have to have that conversation and you can back yeah. out of that because they don't have your consent right. to do an right. SE. So mm -hmm. if that's your opinion, that is absolutely valid because you don't have to engage. And if someone's like, actually, I am interested in getting some doubt. I am on my deathbed. I would love to have an opportunity to just think about this rationally once because I'm terrified of going to heaven. It doesn't sound like a fun place. I heard you're an atheist. Can we talk? Because the only thing I like about Jesus is his abs. <laughs> I hate everything else about it. This can't be real, right? Can I talk to you? It's like, Hell yeah. Excuse my language. Yeah, like, heck yeah, let's talk. Yeah. I'll be happy to talk and we'll see if there's like a good reason. And if it turns out, hey, I actually did Jesus Christianity is real. Dang it, it sucks. But oh well, at least we know something that's true. But we'll work to there together. And that's that's the whole thing about it. It's consent, it's positivity, it's a conversation. Yeah. George, one one thing before we head out to our break. What's up? I uh, just wanted to mention that uh, if it was me, um, I, I think that it's important to have, for me to have understanding and compassion for the, mm. for this dying person, you know, um, to be sensitive to where they're at. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. And consent works both ways. So, uh, Hey guys, we're at the bottom of the half hour. <laughs> Larry, why don't you take us out? Right. We'll do some music in between. Okay, this is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. I remember studying hours and hours on end for the ACT and wanting to get that perfect score. But I felt so ashamed because I was extremely unhappy. And I remember telling my mom and dad, seriously, like this is how I felt. Yeah, so
sad feels pain Like she can't show the pain Something dark inside her brain And it won't come out, you know the dance You waste the time trying to make friends It makes no sense that you can try all day But just to play the game When you can't even make the grave Even mom can't be told Even mom says the same damn thing Still hears the screams Well, child don't get no time to stress Waste the time goes such a mess How can it so dumb? FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, August 23rd, 2020. Uh, Let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First is the Atheist Society of Knoxville. Founded in 2002, we're in our 18th year. We have over a thousand members and you can find us online by searching for Knoxville Atheist or go to knoxvilleatheist.org. You can go to meetup.com and find us there. If you really want to join us, uh, join the meetup, then join the group there. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. They've been around for more than 20 years. Just go to rationalists.org and click on upcoming events. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about Knoxville Atheist Call-In TV show broadcasting here in Knoxville. Well, it's called the Free Thinkers United Coalition of Knoxville Online, and you can find their videos on YouTube. They stream every Wednesday night, I believe it is, and maybe Monday night. You'd have to go and look for it. Go to YouTube and search for four words, Free Thinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And for their earlier TV shows, you could search for Free Thinkers, uh, Free Thought Forum, Knoxville. Uh, their archives of their show should be on there. We had it on the air for 10 years. If you're interested in getting involved in the TV or this radio show, come to an Ask Meetup or join us online on our, on our Facebook pages, Atheist Society of Knoxville or the Rationalists of East Tennessee. You can be our next co-host or guest. Yep. With us on the show, we have our co-host, Wombat. Hello, Wombat. Hey. We also have uh, Boudreaux, the Red Pirate Higgs, uh, George and Dale. Uh, what are we talking about now? Death? We have the light subject. Well, I thought I thought we were talking about our favorite scenes from Christopher Nolan's uh, best trilogy, the Batman trilogy. And my favorite scene is when Batman goes into the interrogation room with Joker there, and he's like, "Where is the love? Where is the love? The love? The love? The love? The love. The love. The love. Where's the love?" Right. <laughs> okay, viewer so, feedback. Viewer Hello. feedback. Yes, viewer feedback. So we're trying to be. Um, um, responding to comments that are listed on our last YouTube comment feed. Also, we have a Reddit group, Street Epistemology, or r slash Street Epistemology. We have other links that you can leave feedback on at the end of the show. Feel free to check them out. Uh, John Cohort, quick comment. He just wants to say, this was a fantastic talk. He's talking about our last topic, which was science versus religion, what changes the most. Also, Nathan
Nathan Matthews says, and I'm reading this <laughs> without making sure there's no cursing. So please be good. Please leave kind comments. Or <laughs> but it says, Nathan Matthews says, for any intelligent life in the universe that has curiosity such as we do, should we expect to see religion as much as science? The desire for answers leads to methods of discovering science, but does this imperfect development always lead to creating religions? If so, maybe in an odd way, we shouldn't be ashamed of discussing our religious history of intelligent life. We are imperfect, aliens are imperfect. Uh, it wouldn't be a that crazy of a thing to bring up in a conversation. <laughs> and I was like, thank you very much for that, that feedback, Nathan. So like, maybe there is some common ground there if we were to bring up religion with aliens, they might be like, yeah, we had that too. Or like, yeah, we have this too, it's kind of cool. All right, uh, Dread Pirate, you had some comments that you'd like to go over. Yeah, yeah, so uh, Min had made a couple of comments. Uh, and he brings up, he says, based on my understanding of the Kub Kubler-Ross model, religion usually helps people make peace with death more productively, something that secular sources tend to lack. Really? And, then, and then says, what is your suggestion? False hope is a, is a temporary cure and may even lead to bigger problems in the future. It's always good to question things. One thing I'd like to say about that is that religion doesn't have a lock on hope. You there can you hope go. for whatever you want. Nobody knows what the afterlife, if there is one, is going to be like. Yeah. But be yeah. aware that hope can be used as a hook yes. uh, um, uh, to lead you around by the nose. Yes. Yeah. Be aware yeah. of that. That's Even to the point where you're willing to lie to someone on their deathbed. Like, that. Yeah. that's how deep it goes. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the, uh, another viewer says, uh, the only time I died, I didn't have time to feel or think anything. I came back, but if I hadn't, I wouldn't know anything about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the interesting thing. Like the hardest part about death is dying. I think a lot of right. people t tend to overlook that. Um, uh, hey, Dred, I'm going to, um, uh, uh, Boudreaux, I'm going to throw this out at you. Uh, there are a lot of songs about, and I'm only throwing this out specifically to you. You'll see why. Uh, there are a lot of songs about dying in like um, metal, of course. But you also have like your alternative rock that like tries to be kind of hooky with it. And then even country songs like will have like their nice serenades of like lost loves, lost dogs, stuff like that. Do you think death in pulp culture is becoming like this new thing? Like we used to maybe see it as something we're afraid of in the past. We became reverent of it. And now it's sort of like this comical character with a hood kind of looks cute with like a skull face we can turn into like an anime character like is it as scary as a culture now and what does that say about culture oh that's a good one uh yeah i guess uh, being that we are a lot more connected to other cultures and mm. other groups i think we can kind of talk about it a little more freely uh imagine if you go back far enough it's this mysterious you know you know, death will come out, especially when we didn't know a lot about, uh, you know, biology and, and, right. and diseases and how they might take, take you early. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I suppose, you know, we really do kind of characterize death as this like, you know, guy, guy with the sickle and the, or the Sith or what is it? <laughs> and then, uh, uh, so. yes, there, there you go. <laughs> In the hood. Yeah. And we kind of, kind of joke about it and make it kind of, silly uh maybe maybe that's a good way to that we're kind of confronting it like yeah. we're coming to terms that it is a thing before compared to just ignoring it the entire time yeah yeah i think i think george had his hand up yeah george what do you i got? i i did because uh, the question of course is coming to me about uh what do you learn in christianity you know traditionally what do you learn about death um, because as I see it, uh, death is presented as a transition into the afterlife. Right. You know, well, and as a, as a musician, um, you know, I, I come to Bach's cantatas in which I find that death is presented as a release from the suffering of life, you know, as presented to the peasants in the congregation. Hmm. Larry, what do you think? Well, it brings me back to this great sacrifice that Jesus should have or supposedly made for us. You know, he died for our sins. He died for every one of us. But in Christianity, really, uh, death is just a change of address. Uh, you, you just continue living. It's uh, the classic jokes I like place. the most. 
Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't groan and smile at that. <laughs> it's still good. <laughs> it's still good. I'm gonna he was God. Still good. Yeah. He was God. Then he was person. Then he was God. Where's the sacrifice? I mean, right. Did he just spend a bad weekend for you? <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Uh, Jesus is bad weekend coming to you in theaters when COVID is gone, rated PG 13, right? Uh, Dret, we're going to throw this out at you. Uh, what do you think we've, how do you think we've evolved as a culture with as far as accepting death and has the prevalence of it in like media, like music and art and like as caricatures, is that an indication that we're coming to better terms with it? Or is it like we're obfuscating the matter? So just can you rephrase that just, just sure. a little shorter? How do you think my dog was walking around? So I uh, oh you got a loud walking hear. dog. Yes, of course. Uh how do you think we evolved with the concept of death over time? Like say a hundred years ago to now. Like have we improved our relationship with death now that we seem to understand it better, seem to be more aware of it? So I, I, I think even, you know, the medical establishment is starting to come around to some degree in um you know, you know, the, the idea of assisted uh, dying, mm. um, you know, certainly Kevorkian, uh, uh, blazed a trail there. Um, and I think, you know, over time people are becoming more comfortable with it. Um, I think also as, uh, as the shift towards non-religiosity, uh, grows and gains mm. some momentum, uh, people are, uh, you know, less inclined to, you know, have this, you know, delusion about afterlife and, uh, and reflect on the reality of existence. Hmm. I also think it was interesting about a Kevorkian because he was citing a lot in a lot of his work, Hippocrates or, uh, the guy who we based the Hippocratic oath off of, which is like, it's not about putting a guy's organs in a jar or on a table and connecting them and making him live as long as possible. It's about quality of life that we should be really concerned with and even that was true even back when we had the first doctors so like what we're trying to do as doctors is improve quality of life not quantity and there's mm -hmm. dignity in someone saying that they no longer consent to live with this with no hope in the future <laughs> cute doggies though all right so uh dale we'll throw this out at you i'm gonna we're gonna hope we're crossing our fingers what do you think culture ha needs to learn more about death if we're at this point. What do I, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 perfect. Yeah, what do you think culture stands I to learn? I, I have no idea. Perhaps you should throw that one to somebody else. I don't Fair understand enough. the question. Fair enough. Boudreaux, what do you think culture has left to learn about death? Uh, I think I think quite a bit. It, it, it seems like um, the more we know, we're, we're still, still plagued by it in, in, in every way and in, in, in terms of, you know, losing a, a loved one. And um, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe science can kind of kick in at some point and you can, you know, record someone's entire life. And someone uh, say science, I have things I want to say. <laughs> no, so, no, so, there yeah. are a lot of PhDs on this call. So like respect to you too, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, maybe, maybe at some point we could, uh, never lose anyone because you could, you know, basically revisit any part of their life at any time. Cool. Maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't want that. I don't want that. Well, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, think, I'm thinking science fiction. I'm thinking uh, okay, okay. way ahead to where, to where we actually deal with death in a different way. It's like, I, I, I would, I would like at least culturally for us to listen to scientists more with the concept mm -hmm. of death. I think particularly with this COVID situation, that if we listen to scientists first, and predominantly only really uh, <laughs> we would have saved a lot of lives and that yeah. we can still be in that position where we can save a lot of lives and the the anti-intellectualism that is pushed not only by the current administration that we have but also by just the tenure of well i'm smart you can't be smarter than me Therefore, and I'm a patriot, <laughs> therefore, I don't have to wear this mask. Therefore, I don't have to wash my hands and I can cough right in front of your face. It's not a big deal. Let's hang out with each other. Right. I forgot who raised their hand first. Uh, George, why don't we go to you, Larry, afterwards and then Dredd. I, I forgot what I was going to say. Fair enough. <laughs> Larry, what do you got? Well, really, I was going to offer, well, Dale uh, shut off his video. I hope he's still there. Uh, we asked him a question about death. Uh, he didn't have anything he really wanted to say about that particular question, but I was just mm -hmm. going to open the field with him. Do you have any thoughts on death you'd like to share with us? Me? 
Yeah. Well, if you want to experience death, usually the closest thing that I can think of would be to go under general anesthesia, where you have no sense of the passing of time or a sense of self or anything like that. You go under, and then a sec as far as you're concerned, a second later, you wake up. You have no idea of the passage of time. It's about as close as I can think of as coming to a void. Many of us uh, have done that. Being in the void. Mm -hmm. as you just a take a nap instead? And <laughs> Sorry, seems safer. Ahead, no, you have a passage of time when you sleep. Really? You don't have that sensation when you have when general you anesthesia. Oh, yeah. Okay. As you George. Dream. Or you dream, you have something like that. George, what do you uh, got? Being, do you remember? Oh, sorry. Yes. No. I, I, Dale, I, well, I want to follow what Dale just said. Having recently been under anesthesia, I received a text message from the anesthesiologist saying, what was your experience? Would you care to post this on on a so social medium? And I replied, hey, man, I was unconscious. What do you want from me? Forget about it. <laughs> yeah. Dale, Dale, you had some lingering points. Sorry. I was going to say that I've worked in uh, emergency rooms and critical care units in several different hospitals. I've probably seen a, about 200 people die. Uh, most of the time, it's when they don't have a chance to say something before they pass away. And then you have the individuals that are in intractable pain or they know that they're going to die. And one of my instructors, I was asking about this, how should, what should you talk about? How should you address the fact that the personnel knows that they're going to die too eventually. And his uh, suggestion was that you take your clues from the person. If they want to talk about some particular aspect of dying, then be open to them. If they don't want to and they want to ignore it, that's their business. You were right. talking before about how to address Consent. death. And for me, that's worked quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Works great for me. Good point. Um, I, I, I was thinking like science fiction jumping off of what Boudreaux says and combining with Dell is like a training camp for people who need to come to terms with death, where they go to a mm -hmm. building, get put under and then wake up with no passage of time. And then should you charge someone for that though? It seems like such a, it seems like, oh man, you literally wasted my money. Cause I didn't experience mm -hmm. yeah. any of that. <laughs> It's the most depressing Disneyland ever, probably. Um, <laughs> guys, we're coming up to the end of the show. Uh, Dread Pirate, where can we find your stuff at? Well, uh, we are live streaming right now on my YouTube channel at Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. And it's eight o'clock in the morning here in. Uh, uh, BC, Canada, uh, Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time. And uh, we run from eight to nine. So that's nice. where you can find it. Very cool. Uh, Boudreau, Eric, I know you got a lot of stuff going on. You've never plugged your, your band before, but it has a SoundCloud account. And I'd like to hear mm -hmm. the music that was on there again. What, where can I find that? And where can we find stuff from you in the future? Yeah, so Orange Whip was, was the only original band that was ever in where we actually recorded quality stuff. All right. Don't <laughs> uh, there's say a, that. There's a t well, there, you I have can a always be your harshest stuff. judge. Yeah. You can always be your harshest judge. <laughs> Got to represent well, but, we, but we do have a SoundCloud account. Search Orange Whip, one word. Uh, we got it from the Blues Brothers. Who wants nice. an Orange Whip? Orange Whip? Nice. Orange Whip? Orange Whip? Nice. Uh, so uh, it was a fun band. We did a lot of uh, original stuff, but then we also covered uh, a lot of different music uh, including uh cream's disraeli gears album which was fun. nice and so. then foo fighters too right foo, a bunch of foo fighter covers uh no not that band uh, no <laughs> that was a darker time we don't bring yeah. that up where can we find your stuff in the future like uh i know you're working on a podcast pretty soon right yeah well, man i'm waiting on my waiting on my cohort to, to mm -hmm. sell his flip flip his house and we're gonna get back into it but we uh our, our current plan is to do some podcasts from the from the water on kayaks and record it. Nice. I, I keep promising, guys. I'm like I'm just saying, die. make the podcast yeah. about flipping a house and why it's hard for a friend to do that, and then then you're good. But maybe maybe that's yeah. the way to do it. 
George, uh, it sounded like you wanted to have something plugged. You better have something to plug. Yeah, a little, mic- a little micro story on the way out here about cool. death that just occurred to me. Okay. Uh, way, way back during the 1960s, I set up a harpsichord for an internationally famous harpsichordist at Carnegie Hall in New York. Her name was Sylvia Kind. And I looked her up recently. She liked my work. And I looked her up recently online and found an obituary for her in the uh, oh. Seattle newspaper mm. in which the nurse who attended her on her deathbed said that um, the harpsichordist said, I think I'm ready to die now. And she did. Mm. Wow. Mm. Poignant. But with dignity. I like that. So, you know, it's bittersweet. Uh, Dale, you know, if I want to find out, listen, I have an internet connection and a bleeding question I've had my entire life was, how did Jesus do it? I've been thinking about that myself all the time. And I'm like, can't I combine the technology I have access to and these lingering questions to figure out how Jesus did it? Can you give me a clue of what I should do? I could give you a clue, but I don't understand what you're saying. If you're wanting to know about how Jesus did it.com, that's a place where you can go where you can find out how Jesus did the miracles. Oh man, that is exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> how Jesus did it.com. And you can find out all you need. Wonderful. Uh, hey, do you put your uh, sculpture work or artist work available for commissions online or anything like that? Do you have anything like that? No, I've sold a few pieces long ago, I, but I don't, don't do that anymore. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, you can find my stuff at Let's Chat. That's this channel right here. Uh, we do Socratic Examination, SE, whatever you want to call it. And I strive to learn how to talk to people about anything and try to understand them in the process. And I think it's a worthwhile hobby. You should check it out. Um, you can see that Dread Pirate does the same thing too. Larry does the same way too. I have even had Boudreau on my channel doing SC with folks. Everyone does it differently. That's okay. There's going to be variations, but it's good to show that you can inform how you, what you're comfortable with and what you consent to in this chance to give people the opportunity to think critically about what they believe to be true. And that's worthwhile. Larry, what do you got to say? Well, anybody who's interested in what I have to think or say about religion and atheism uh, sh- should visit my blog on digitalfreethought.com. Uh, make sure you click on the blog button. Um, I have a book on uh, on Amazon that's called Atheism, What's It All About? Uh, you can find it there in paperback and in uh, electri- electronic format. If you're having trouble or leaving religion beliefs behind, uh, you can go to recoveringfromreligion.org and maybe get help from them. Uh, If you'd like to listen to our podcast, they are available through iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, Podcast.com, et cetera, et cetera. Just go online and do a search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. If you have questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and we'll answer them on future shows. We're going to start having shows that are dedicated to listener questions, uh, maybe this month, maybe next. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe uh, to be notified for new episodes are coming up. And remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. WOZO Radio right here in Knoxville at 7 o'clock on Wednesday and streaming online as well. Um, Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Your lives matter.